Amy, 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 come on. No bitey, no bitey. Amy, no, 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 no bitey. No bitey. Amy, no bite. Amy mustn't bite the cows. Mustn't bite the cows when they're having their porridge. Well, what do you reckon, little Amy? What do you reckon? Hey? Hey! <laughs> 2019 began with a drought worse than any I had experienced. The creek hadn't flowed for months, and although it was flowing again in the autumn, our house dam, which we used to water our gardens and give any cows visiting our house a drink, was left in a low state. This was the first time I'd seen the bottom of our house dam since the time we had it dug in 1981 to water our gardens. Because the garden plants were dependent on their daily ration of water, I decided to start siphoning from a nearby dam we'd never used before. It does look like it's come down maybe a bit. This involved laying out a 150 metre pipe from the new dam to join up with the house dam's pipe. I left the pipe on the surface, hoping no fire would get to it before I had a chance to dig it in when the soil is not so hard.
This was a time when Australia's bushfires were grabbing worldwide attention. We didn't see any fires on our farm, but the place was tinder dry and the sky was filled with this eerie smoke. We don't normally water this navel orange tree, but it was looking so bad you had to wonder if it would survive without a drink. How much longer could the grass survive without any rain? I didn't know, but it was what was going through my mind every day. This panting kangaroo looks very hot. I guess they're too wild to take a drink out of the bath like our cows do. Although it wasn't much, I was very excited when we managed to catch some runoff from a storm which freshened up the place even though the soil remained very dry. Yeah, it's past 6.30, it's really late in the day. So you've got this really bizarre sunshine coming from over that side, hitting the trees all nice. So you've got this thick, dark, thundery looking cloud that seems to have missed us all the time. Please, 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 just let us have some rain. Hello. Christmas Day, it was revealed our house dam had collected more runoff. This was another opportunity to sample some new water. Don't just sip it, completely immerse yourself in it. A little fruity, certainly earthy, with a delicious hint of something dead and stinky. Mmm. What are these birds with long curved beaks visiting on Christmas Day? I think they're ibis. The place was much greener, but the creek which had stopped flowing months ago still wasn't flowing. So after more rain, it was great to see it flowing once again.
place soon took on a beautiful green look, but there were still bare patches for the grass to reclaim as a result of the dieback. Cockatoos in my pika nut tree, which I'd feared had died in the drought as it failed to come into leaf in the spring like it normally does. Cockatoos love eating fallen bunya nuts, as do cows, who are enlightened to what a tasty treat they are. With no more rationing of water, the summer ended with my garden looking lush like it normally does this time of the year. The house dam being full ensured the garden would be okay for another year. The following summer and autumn went to the opposite extreme where there was no let up in the rain. And then again this year, but even worse. We didn't have the worst floods, though we did have a few as we typically do, but it was the never ending rain that kept the place horribly wet and muddy that was more extreme than anything I've seen before. I picked a bad year to try growing so many different kinds of flowers I've never grown before as the waterlogged conditions made it impossible for many plants the capsicums, tomatoes, pumpkins, cucumbers, sweet corn, zinnias, forget-me-nots and pansies handled it pretty well but flowers like my Californian poppies and cosmos which had done so well in the drought with a little water hated being waterlogged I was excited by this mix of blue flowering seeds we'd sent away for in the spring as blue is a lovely colour Violet, purple, magenta, red, pink, yellow and white can all be lovely, but pure blue flowers are much rarer in nature. Many of the seeds from this packet germinated, but only the cornflowers and forget-me-nots survived all the rain to flowering. While in the garden scurvy weed, a semi-succulent native thrived, smothering many of my plants. It's very persistent. I've spent many hours pulling it up and it gives me an allergic reaction on the underside of my wrists, making it a difficult plant to love. But unlike the seeds you pay money for, no effort is required to grow it and it has pretty little blue flowers with yellow stamens. It was during this wet autumn in April my art was exhibited in Ponts in France. It was too far away for me to attend the event, but it was very exciting to see a photo of my art made with my very own homegrown software Seamless 3D being exhibited on the other side of the world. The event was planned for 2020, which prompted me to create Lucy with a pearl earring, but the event was postponed to 2022 due to the lockdowns. Many thanks to Elaine and his colleagues for putting the exhibit together. Thanks to the rain easing off and a little help from Amy, I was able to dig most of this trench in June. I'd made it a priority to get the water pipe dug in this year due to other commitments that had prevented me from getting it done since the drought. While digging this trench in June, I modelled most of my flowers. I modelled some daffodils, well May the 27th to be exact, tulips on the 4th of June, crocuses on the 16th, wheat on the 18th, 
snowdrops on the 21st, scillas on the 24th, and my zinnias on the 28th. What could top them? My asters on the 3rd of July. I was on a roll, and it didn't stop there. Californian poppies on the 5th of July improved on the 7th. This never-ending success was starting to make me dizzy. Success like this cannot be sustained indefinitely, so I was bracing myself for a fall, which I did somewhat, when I struggled to make my cabbages. If I would used textures to give them some veins, it might have made them more cabbage-like, but I would hoped with the right shape, not unlike that of a rose. I could capture the essence of a cabbage, and I wanted to keep everything simple, so I could easily show how to make my plants in tutorials. Perhaps I will try seeing how easy it is to add textures when I have a decent brassica leaf to take a photo of in the garden. Now it's something that some animal has pushed that right over there. Or did I forget to put it on? I don't know. The rain held back my brassicas during the summer and autumn months, and now the bandicoots are making my garden look like a World War I scene. They've dug up some of my best plants, and they keep removing their protection from the bower birds that love to eat young brassicas and onions this time of the year, which is why I've hesitated to transplant my onions. After my humbling experience with my cabbages, I made my pansies on the 21st of July, which though took me longer than the others to make, I'm very pleased with them. I'm so glad I tried adding these dark streaks or veins as they add a lot of character. Originally, I made the streaks for this pansy, or is it a viola, but the veins add a nice touch when dark splotches which gives them that classic pansy look are added. So there you have it. You can spend a fortune on seeds, spend countless hours tending your garden plants, only to be left feeling frustrated, angry, bitter and twisted. Or you can use SEMA 3D to create your dream garden. For those who only watch my videos for my gardening content, don't worry, I haven't given up gardening, I'm a glutton for punishment. Before completing this vlog, I've planted my onions out and mulched them with sticks on top, which if you have enough, seem to work well in protecting them from the bandicoots. Just thick blady grass mulch seems to deter them. Because bandicoots are most active at night, I didn't have any footage of them, so for this vlog, I waited patiently in the cold, late at night, until one performed for the camera while I shone my torch at it. They look a lot like an antichinus, except they look more like a big furry ball much of the time with an even longer conical nose. It's a pain having your plants repeatedly dug up if you don't protect them, but bandicoots are too cute to hate, and they reduce bushfires by digging in fallen leaves, and they eat a lot of pests, including mice and slugs. which might explain why an outbreak of slugs went away around the same time the bandicoots were getting active.